The economy is always the most important issue in any election. So Prop 206 or the raising of the minimum wage is so important in Arizona. We have a great conversation about that today. Welcome to the Mike Broomhead Show. Well, I got a message. I got a song. Can I get a witness? Tell me what's going on. Show the people. Great conversation about the Arizona economy and the raising of the minimum wage with Glenn Hammer, who is the CEO of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. But we start every show off the same way with something we call the sweep. It's sponsored by our good friends at Zero Res Carpet and Tile Cleaning. No way we can start off any discussion about the big stories of the week if we don't talk about the final presidential debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. It was an amazing uh, I thought it was a, the best debate performance by Donald Trump thus far, but overall, I think the star of the show was Chris Wallace. I think he did a phenomenal job as the moderator. He was tough on both candidates, asked very difficult questions, gave the other a chance to respond, great follow-up questions. But for whatever reason, some of the big moments and the big comments that caught everybody by surprise or had everybody talking was Donald Trump. He was talking about immigration, talking about building the wall, and he used the phrase bad hombres. Watch this. We have some bad, bad people in this country that have to go out. We're going to get them out. We're going to secure the border. And once the border is secured, at a later date, we'll make a determination as to the rest. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. What Donald Trump said is what America has been screaming for, but he used the phrase bad hombres. That's all they're talking about. He said, we're going to secure the border. We're going to make sure the border secured. And once the border is secure, then we're going to figure out what to do with the 11 to 15 million people in the country illegally. I think that's what everybody wanted to hear, but they're so focused on that bad hombres thing. One of my favorite moments of the debate was they were talking about everything being rigged. And Hillary Clinton had this in the bag. Man, she was ready to roll with this and her statements about Donald Trump complaining about everything being rigged. But the one-liner that you're about to hear by Donald Trump, I think, stole the moment. It was a moment where he knew he was being funny. He even cracked a little bit of a smile. And he showed a little bit of that disarmed humanity. Watch. Every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is, is rigged against him. He lost the Iowa caucus. He lost the Wisconsin primary. He said the Republican primary was rigged against him. Uh, there was even a time when he didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against should've him. Should have gotten it. This, this is a mindset. <laughs> that is my favorite line. I should have gotten it. Just, he should have gotten the enemy. Even Hillary cracked a smile at that. Chris Wallace chuckled a little bit. It was funny. Now, a serious discussion about Russia when they were talking about immigration and, and the WikiLeaks. And so all of a sudden, Hillary Clinton doesn't want to talk about the WikiLeaks email. She wants to talk about Donald Trump and Russia. Here again was a back and forth. This one a little bit more tense as they call each other puppets. Take a look. Look, Putin, oh, but, 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 from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet, no puppet. It's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, you're that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America, that you encouraged espionage against our people, that you are willing to spout the Putin line, sign up for his wish list break up NATO, do whatever he wants to do. There you have it. More now. Let's not talk about what's in the emails, Russia and espionage. Now here was the moment. This is where I believed Hillary Clinton showed the big shift and what a politician she is. And this was a moment, again, I thought Donald Trump did the right thing. The question that's being asked of her is about corruption. It's about the relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department while she was Secretary of State. And her pivot and answer about this is crazy. Take a look. And what went on between you and the Clinton Foundation, why isn't it what Mr. Trump calls pay to play? Well, everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of uh, uh, our country's interests and our values. The State Department has said that. I think that's been proven. But I am happy. In fact, I am thrilled to talk about the Clinton Foundation. There you have it. So a non-answer. She's asked about corruption between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation. And she says, let's talk about the great work of the Clinton Foundation. It was amazing. So there you have it. 
Bernie Sanders, Chelsea Clinton, Michelle Obama in town this week. Why? Because they believe that it is in play in Arizona. Poll numbers show Hillary ahead by five points with 20% of the voters not undecided so far. I think Hillary Clinton is not going to win Arizona, but we never know. Sheriff Joe behind in the polls in Arizona. Prop 205, the legalization of marijuana appears to be ahead in the polls. Prop 206, the legalization or the changing of the minimum wage seems to be far ahead. Our conversation with Glenn Hammer, is the, who is the chairman or the CEO of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, is what we're going to talk about, Prop 206, and why I believe and why you should believe it's bad for Arizona. We'll get to that here in just a few moments. But before we do that, let me talk to you about my friends at Zero Res. I love Zero Res for a multitude of reasons. The employees, happy employees, make happy customers. They're going to leave your home better than they find it. The product is the best one on the market. It's called Empowered Water. They don't have soaps or harsh chemicals in your carpet. The benefit is this. Your carpets are going to dry faster, and they're going to stay cleaner much longer. Do yourself a favor and check out the good people at Zero Res because they are the ones that are going to do your job right and get your carpets just as clean as they should be. We'll be back. Of all the issues that are important in an election cycle, it always is the economy. People vote with their wallets. What are we doing to move the Arizona economy forward? One of the biggest issues on our ballot is Prop 206, which is the raising of the minimum wage in Arizona. To get an expert opinion, Glenn Hammer from the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and as always, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me back on the show, Mike. Um, Prop 206 is important to me. I started out minimum wage myself. I know you did. We've had many conversations that now that, you know, you're heading up the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and so people look at that organization and think, here's a big business guy. But you started out like I did, making minimum wage or close to it. I made about a nickel more than the minimum wage as the assistant bun, bun flipper at my local Burger King. And I started in restaurants myself. I worked in a Mexican restaurant and worked my way up from there. But now that I look back, it gave me the job skills. It gave me the tenacity and the, and the you know, you work with other people and you show up on time and you do the right things. That's what those jobs are supposed to do. Absolutely. It was an entry level position. Arguably at that time I was overpaid at the minimum wage. It, I learned a lot. All those things that you mentioned, all those lessons that I, that I still hold very dear to me. And what kills me, Mike, is that those opportunities are vanishing for young people because of these misguided minimum wage efforts. The entry level rung of our job ladder is being eliminated. And what we see in other places that have gone down this route, what's happening? There are fewer and fewer and fewer jobs, period. And Arizona is now going to raise the minimum wage, which I believe is going to squeeze out. It's going to squeeze the middle class and the small business owners. Cost of living is going to go up. There's no way prices stay the same. So everything goes up. The minimum wage worker's life doesn't change at all. Their life is exactly the same. The um, upper echelon, the wealthy, are going to be able to absorb the cost. It's not something they want to do, but it's not going to hurt them at all. The working class family on a budget is who is going to feel this, and the small business owner that would love to employ people are going to have less people that they're able to employ, is my theory, on arbitrarily raising the minimum wage. Yeah, absolutely. And what you, you see, Mike, is basically every major chamber from across the state representing small, medium, and large companies oppose this effort because they, they see this coming. And when you talk about on the consumer side, yeah, hey, viewer, here's, here's a news flash. When you wake up, if this passes, check, your, check how much your latte costs. I mean, everyone is going to feel the price increase. And, and the real minimum wage isn't going to be this dramatic $12 that they're trying to get to. It's going to be zero when people don't have jobs that otherwise would have. And that's the other part of this is when those jobs start to disappear when high school kids want to get a job, when somebody's entering the workforce for the first time and trying to gather some job skills and any kind of a resume, the jobs are just not going to be there. Retail in the holiday season where retailers hire, let's say they're going to hire five people for seasonal work. They may only hire three because of the increase in the minimum wage, which means there's two people without a job. And that's not a scare tactic. That's just a reality for businesses. 
it's a reality because you take a look at taking it from eight to ten dollars January one. That's a twenty five percent increase, and that doesn't even factor in all the different costs that are tied to the basic hourly wage. And then soon after, it's going to go to twelve bucks. And, and you take a look, at least some other states, they had the, the, the brains, if I may say, to tier it to different parts of the economy. Uh, not, every, not every section of this state is Maricopa County. So for the rural areas of this state, you, you might as well call this the Small Business Elimination Act. I mean, you're just going to start seeing a number of businesses that people enjoy going to uh, close their doors. And there's a big difference in the economy of Maricopa and, let's say, a Yavapai County. And even then, there's a difference between Sedona and Cottonwood and, and other areas of the state, which ends up hurting because they have to abide by the, the law. But what are they going to do? They're going to eliminate jobs or, and or they're going to raise prices. Probably both will, will happen. We'll, we'll definitely see prices increase for everyone. So that's, that's, that's something we should all be ready for. We're definitely going to see a reduction in hours and probably jobs. And, and there will be some businesses that just can't bear the cost. Because Mike, as you said, it's not just this minimum wage. It's, it's, it's other things. It's Obamacare. It's all these other costs that are coming and crashing down on small businesses. And it's wrong. It's immoral. And it's going to hurt this state. It's going to hurt businesses. It's going to hurt workers. It's going to hurt our economy. And that's why we strongly urge voters to vote no on Prop 206. And 206 doesn't pass if there's not an element of class warfare. This little bit of us against them, the haves versus the have-nots, have or the proletariat versus the bourgeoisie, if you've ever heard the Communist Manifesto, it, is, it pits the business owner against the employee when it's never really been that. They want, most employers want to pay their employees as much as possible. But it's got to be economy-driven and not um, arbitrarily driven by legislation. And Mike, thank you for saying that. That's absolutely right. Most, most employers, they, they have very good hearts. They want to see their employees do well. But it has to be economy driven, because it's not like the federal government. If they can't make a profit, they go out of business. So you know, we want to see people make more money. But the right way to do that is through education, and it's through experience and working hard. And uh, you know, again, we, we just think that this this proposal would have a devastating impact on a lot of our businesses and people. There's another element to this, and this is the fact that it's a proposition and how it alters the Constitution. It binds the legislature's hand. I want to look at that element here in just a moment. Take a quick break. When we get back, we talk about why it's a proposition that it's bad, because what it does to the legislature and their ability to regulate it. So we'll be back in a moment. We're talking Prop 206, the raising of the minimum wage. We're talking with Glenn Hammer from the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Um, I don't want to cloud issues, but whether it's Prop 205 or Prop 206, anytime there's a proposition that's passed, it alters the Constitution, which means the legislature can't go in and make changes, even if they are deemed necessary or it's in the best interest of the people, unless it furthers the cause. I'll give you one example. When medical marijuana passed, they told us, it will, it's not going to be like California, that you're going to, not going to have a small number of doctors handing out these recommendations. It's going to be a two-year relationship with a physician, minimum, in order to qualify for this recommendation. Immediately after it was passed, it was changed. They said, well, that's not fair, that if you get sick, you should be able to go immediately to your doctor. And they were able to change the law. Why? Because it furthered the cause of medical marijuana, where the legislature couldn't go in and restrict anything. How is that going to happen with Prop 206? Well, Mike, you bring up a very important point, and this is very unique to Arizona, is that we have something called the Voter Protection Act. So once something passes at the ballot, you can't change it legislatively. Even if you had every single member of the legislature, even if it was incredibly in the realm of common sense, if, if it's ruled that it doesn't further the interests of, of, of the act. So when you have something like this minimum wage scheme, what, what happens if the state hits a downturn? You know, what happens if, if we, we find out that we're right, that a lot of jobs are being lost, and particularly in areas like rural Arizona, small businesses are closing their doors? We're out of luck. 
we're out of luck at least until the next election cycle. So that's something that's really important. The other thing is it's a lot of out-of-state dollars coming in. National teachers unions, for God's sakes, are, are helping to fund this effort. And, and you know, which I find ironic, because we have heard from school districts, uh, particularly outside of Maricopa County, Mike, that it's going to affect their budgets because they have a lot of side services. So guess who's going to get squeezed? The teacher union members. We're going to put pressure on schools in an economic way so they're going to have fewer dollars to spend on teachers. Another element of Prop 206 is a minimum requirement for uh, sick leave, 40 hours a week or 24 hours for um, businesses with 15 employees or less, where they're, they are mandated to give sick leave to employees. Let's say that employers come and say, we can afford the minimum wage, the part of that we've adjusted to. But now I'm having to give basically a week's vacation to a part-time employee or to somebody I've hired. And what do we do here? And the legislature cannot go in and even adjust that if they want to. I'll tell you why that's also offensive. 99% of employers are, are, are going to adjust. If, 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 a, if an employee is sick or an employee has to take some time off, em, employers are going to figure out a way to make sure their employees are, are happy. Right. But what this does is this basically creates this new bureaucratic structure with all sorts of record keeping. So if you're a big company, you could absorb it. But you're a small company, this is another distraction. And, and you're losing control also over when you're giving this time off. Because by the way, the way this is uh, uh, defined within the proposition, it's a very loosey-goosey definition in terms of sick leave and families. It's very expansive. Does it, and I don't know this, maybe you can tell me, does it accumulate? So like from year to year, I don't know if in Prop 206 it accumulates, but if it does, again, the tracking of that as well. I, I don't believe that it accumulates. Okay. Now, when we look at businesses, what are they saying to you about this passing? Because right now in the polls, it looks as if it's favored by the voters. Well, this is not the type of thing that you take on to oppose if you're just looking to pad your batting average. Uh, the history of minimum wage uh, increases being passed in states and localities across the country, it's, it's, it's very high. But what we're hearing from businesses is that they're looking at this right now, and, 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 and some are going to raise prices. Some are going to have to look for other ways uh, for cost reductions. But the story is not going to be a good one. And here's the sad thing. The state is making such great progress. You take the national rankings uh, or the magazines like Forbes. We're, we're, we're killing it. Forbes has, has us as the number one state in terms of future job growth. CEO Magazine has us as a top five or six state. Uh, this is going to be something that is not going to be looked at favorably by companies here or companies looking to come to Arizona. It's a real problem for the state. So I have about a minute left here. When you look at what is needed in Arizona to have real growth and not this arbitrary changes, what needs to happen and why should we oppose 206? We need to continue to make sure that the state is competitive when it comes to our tax toward and regulatory reform. There's some additional things we need to do to improve our education system. But jacking up our wages artificially, accelerating automation, and, and leading to reduced opportunities for Arizona's entry level workers is the wrong way to go. Uh, we have more to work to do at the state legislature, but this out-of-state special interest effort is the wrong way for this state to go. And we urge uh, the viewers to vote no on Prop 206. I encourage you to look at the Arizona Chamber of Commerce. Glenn Hammer, I think, is one of the most um, honest men in Arizona, and you have always done the right thing for Arizona and for your organization, so I appreciate your opinion on this. Always a privilege to be on your show. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's time for one of my favorite parts of the show. We call it From Arizona for America. It's our way to congratulate and thank the fine Arizona men and women who have recently graduated from boot camp and are now serving in our country's military. So join me in honoring Airman Adrian Keene from Shadow Ridge High School in Surprise, Airman Taylor Thagard from Mingus Union High School in Cottonwood, 
and Army Private Carlo Zoll from Flagstaff High School in Flagstaff. For a list of more of our friends and neighbors that are from Arizona for America, go to the Mike Broomhead page at aztv.com. We'll be back in a few minutes with Broomhead's Best and hashtag this, so don't go away. It's time for my favorite part of the show. We call it Broomhead's Best. Easy one for me this week. David Johnson, Arizona Cardinal, three touchdowns over 100 yards once again as they are now at 500. The Arizona Cardinals beat the New York football Jets. David Johnson, you are this week's Broomhead's Best. Now what's burning up the internet? We call it hashtag this. All right, hashtag check your panties. Anchor Eric Phillips is talking about a rice cooker that's been recalled, but he makes a bit of a mistake. Not his fault, it's on the teleprompter. Watch this. Check your panties. About 175,000 rice, I think that was supposed to be pantries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're on live TV, check your panties works too. That's this week's <laughs> hashtag this. We'll be back in a moment to close out the show. It's been a fun one so far, don't go away. Just a little over two weeks until the election, I want to thank Glenn Hammer for talking Prop 206 with us today. I think it's a very important issue for the Arizona economy. Next week, we talk Prop 205. That's the legalization of marijuana in Arizona. Another big issue for our state. Looking at Colorado, is this the right thing to do? We're out of time. We'll be back next Saturday. Have a great week, everyone. God bless. Get more of Mike Broomhead on Facebook, Twitter, and of course weekday mornings from 6 to 10 on News Talk 550 KFYI.